Hey everybody. Oh, I'm, the new one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lauren and this is Richard Hello. and we're here to continue the Tanks vs. Zombies C++ and Paper 2D stream. Yep. So what, when we last left off in the fifth stream we had uh, zombies able to do damage to tanks, tanks able to do damage to zombies, um, but we didn't really have death or health or any of that kind of payoff going on. So that's what we're going to start doing today. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think we just tracked it, and I'm I'm not sure exactly how far we got, but we're gonna add some stuff to it today anyway, and it's gonna actually work. Yes. And we're also upgrading the project to 414. So when we upload oh, yes. it on the forums for everybody to go download and check out, um, you'll actually want to try it out with 414. Yep. Um, so okay, let's just get right in here. Uh, we have our project up. Oh, we're gonna try a, a slightly different format today. We're going to have the completed code and we're just going to go through uh, the important diffs. Um, that way, you know, if there's something minor that we needed to do but are, are not, you know, don't think it's worth discussing, it'll still be there in the project you get, but we won't, we won't have to spend time discussing every, you know, every minor syntactical change. Yes. Um, all right, so let's start out over here. Uh, all right, so uh, this time we want to have a concept of what sort of damage we do. Because, as I said before, we want to smush those zombies and squeeze all the raspberry <laughs> zombie jam out of them so that they get better and stop being zombies. So we'll, we're going to want to know the difference between having shot a zombie here, so we have the hit with missile damage type, and having crushed a zombie by rolling the tank over it, which is totally a thing we can now do yeah. um, right there. And then finally, when the zombie slaps the hood of your tank, um, I made a damage type for that. And as you go on, you'll just make more and more of these damage types. Um, the only thing... Flamethrowers and yeah, spike yeah, fi traps. Fire based damage, anything like that, yeah. Um, and for, you know, more, more, I don't know, traditional games where you have, you know, oh, this enemy takes extra damage from fire or whatever, that's kind of what you'd have this for, or different animation if you... Or sound effects. Different or sound effects, effects, particle effects, all that kind of stuff. The one thing you want to resist the urge to do is rearrange this into alphabetical order, um, because you know, like hit with missile right now has the you know unknown is zero, hit with missile is one, crushed is two. If I rearrange these things, I go, oh wait, this is out of order. Okay, well everything that I set to crushed, if I set anything in data to mm -hmm. crushed, or I checked anything in a blueprint, that could still that could be the wrong value now. Okay. So don't don't rearrange these. Just add to the bottom and and resist the urge to alphabetize, uh, which for many programmers is is an active effort. And but don't rearrange your enums. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, unknown is good to have around for things like maybe you have a state you don't handle necessarily, or you know mm -hmm. just a nice default state of like if you don't know the damage type, just do some nice default damage. Yeah, it's also nice in in case you forgot to set damage type somewhere, um, it'll come up as unknown, so you'll catch that a little more easily. Yeah. You, you can put uh, debug logs or, or checks in your code against that. Um, okay, so that's that's pretty much it. Um, we're also going to go down to uh, to our damage interface and update that with our damage type. Um, you notice I'm not using t enum as byte. I'm not going to use that anywhere. Okay. Uh, and the reason is that we're using an enum class, which we've been supporting since I think it was like 4.11 or something. Mm -hmm. We've been supporting that for a little while. Uh, maybe 4.12, I don't remember. And uh, we've declared it as a uint8 right here. Um, so that's already done for us, and we can just use this now. Oh. Um, so that, that's, that's pretty helpful. Um, let's see. Where are we going next? Uh, so that, that covers that. Okay, so then, of course, we're going to have to do... So what inherits this damage interface? Because what we have, tanks yes. doing damage mm -hmm. and zombies doing damage. Yes, okay. so exactly. So tanks.h. Um, I think that's our tank... Like our main oh, I'm sorry. That's that's tanks.h. I want tank.h. Next time we should name this like, <laughs> well, tank zombie game. <laughs> tanks. Yeah, tanks is a good name for the project. But yeah, you're right. Maybe tanks versus zombies would have made it more clear. But whatever. Okay. Um, it was pretty obvious that was wrong right away. <laughs> um, so the damage interface. Yep. Receive damage. Yes. I think right at the top of the. There screen. we go. Here there it go. is. Here's our damage interface, which is. If this file were bigger, I would have done a control F and s just search through to find it, but mm -hmm. it's a pretty small file, so just scroll. Um, yeah, having those functions marked off as like when they're inherited from so that you can say go find the parent function is super helpful. Like when you're going through engine code, you're like, this uh, character thing is actually from actor. You can actually go look at actor in the base implementation. Yeah, yeah that, I that, is, that is a pretty helpful thing. I haven't seen a, a, an auto assist tool that does that yet. So Vax people, take note. Um, please let me do that. 
Maybe they already do, and I just don't know where the feature is. But anyway, this little uh, tilde here, by the way, is just a feature that keeps this thing out of uh, tooltips. Um, our tooltip uh, generation system knows to ignore these. So that way, this U function down here Doesn't won't get, get this oh, stuck yeah. to it, which is totally Would not be the right erroneous. Mm -hmm. I didn't bother to put an actual tooltip on this because, I mean... But it's a blueprint native event. Maybe you should have a... It is. Oh. It, it, it could have one. Yeah. It's just that it's called tank die, and it's for when the tank dies. <laughs> so <laughs> so I didn't. But it would be a reasonable thing to do to write one anyway that just says this happens when the tank dies. And actually, that could even be helpful because I'm saying this happens when the tank dies. I'm not telling the tank to die. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Um, also, that it has a native implementation, right? So that in blueprints, you'd know that there's some base code that you could call or not call. Oh, that's true. That might also be a good thing to, uh, to point out. Um, okay. So uh, let me let me look up our our diffs for this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Oh, and then uh, for the crush, we put a collision body on the tank. Now, interestingly enough, where are you, tank bot? Oh, there it is. There we go. Um, okay, so we're not actually using this directly for collision. Okay. Um, you could, if we had something that, that fired at the tank, we could see if it hits this box component or not. Right. What we're actually going to use it for is it's just, just there for convenience. Um, we're actually going to pull the size and the position off of it and then just just do a, a manual collision check that way. Okay. So we're not using it for physics yet, although we could. Right, if you had two tanks driving around, you want to like bumper cars with the tanks or things like yep. that. Yep, or anything that you, if a zombie were to were to throw one of these pastries at your tank, <laughs> then... <laughs> zombies that throw donuts. I assume they're trying to convert you into zombies as well. Yes. They're trying to throw them in to some sort of opening and so that you'll get hungry and eat them. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we could use it for that, we don't yet. Uh, actually, let's go over the CPP file and see what we do with that before we get to the zombies. We'll do the zombies next. And while Richard pulls it up, the backstory of our zombies is that they've all eaten a bunch of what, donuts filled Highly with... Highly questionable pastries, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Zombie jelly, and which makes them turn into zombies, and then they're trying to repeat the process, and that's why they're chasing your tank. Yes, and we're trying to help them by squeezing all that jelly out of them <laughs> so they can uh, resume healthy life as non-zombie humans. Um, uh, we included zombie.h for a reason, I believe. Um, now let's see. So our tank body, tank body. There we go. So that's pretty much it. We just we're putting in we're putting in default sizes here. Um, we could change these in the we could set have these changed in the blueprint, I guess, if we wanted to. But right, this if we made is a larger fine. tank somehow in blueprints. We could change the box extents that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we could do anything like that. We could also yeah we could also change the tank in real time if it was one of those games like uh like any of those um you know shmups where you get extra like wings on the side of your oh, ship that yeah. shoot extra laser cannons and then your ship gets bigger. Um, we we could do that. We happen not to. And since we have access to the code, we can just set the correct default size that we actually want right in here. It's pretty simple. Right, but that's um, just numbers that you, you tweaked to figure out what would match up to the actual tank sprite, right? Yeah, I mean, it actually only took one try because you just, just look at the tank sprite and it's like 40 pixels. So you go, okay, you know. That makes um, it easier. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty easy. Um, and 100, so a lot of our things in this game are really tall. It's a 2D game, so we just made a lot of things really tall so that we could adjust them up and down to have... Uh, to have different things render, you know, like, like, so if you go under a tree, the tree is just physically higher than you, so it renders on top of you. Right. But we don't want to have that interfere with collision, so we just make everything super tall. Right. That um, way you wouldn't accidentally, like, miss the zombie or a tree by being slightly over or below it. Um, oh man, do we not have line number display in here? Okay, we'll have to get line number display. And we're also going to set up a bunch of, um... Oh, collision profiles. Of oh, collision profiles, right. I really like collision profiles. I, I almost always just use collision profiles. They're technically not quite as fast as um, using a collision channel directly mm -hmm. because if you use the channel, you would just pass in. The, the functions for using them are almost the same. It's like, you know, overlap multi by channel, overlap multi, multi by, by profile. Right. It's like the same. It's, it's no harder there, but uh, I kind of like this because it lets, um, it lets me set up a lot more specific uh, you know, I want this and this and only overlap that and block this and ignore that. Kind of like... I, I have an unlimited number of those. Right, compared to like World Dynamic where like some things you might want to move, have moving and not collide with and some things you might want to have moving and do collide with. Yeah. Like technically those are both dynamic things in the world. Yeah, Yeah. so so I like to do that. The reason it's not quite as efficient is because right before doing it, all the functions that are by profile do is they look up 
what channel settings this profile wants, mm -hmm. and then they call the channel function. Okay. So there's like a little bit of extra work. Uh, unless you're being really intense with the amount of collisions you're doing, though, to me, the ease of use is just worth it. Okay. Uh, so I, I just go with that. And um, and we've put on in something else here. Okay, so now whenever we die, we're just going to have this as a rule that we set our health to, well, it's going to be negative one, but the point is any negative value. Right. So here what we're going to do is just shut off our tank controls if you're dead. Oh, so you can't just yeah, be so a zombie tank driving around, so to yep. speak? Oh, no. oh Lauren. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so basically I just took all of our existing code and just wrapped it in and if we're not dead, check. Um, so you could do in like an else down there at the bottom and like some sort of effect for if you did actually have your health greater than one. Or, sorry, you did have health less than zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, might even, it might even not be a bad idea to go back to your damage interface and add in a function that, that, that says whether or not you're dead, mm -hmm. just like is dead. Um, that might not be a bad idea, but I didn't feel it was really necessary to do that yet. There are only two places really where I'm going to check this. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just I didn't need to overcomplicate that. Um, all right, so let's really do want line numbers displayed here. You don't see line numbers on this, do you? I don't either. I don't, but it looks like this is most of the. Um, let's see, move the tech. There we go. Yeah, fortunately, I have like comments and stuff that I can search on to. Which is why it's awesome to comment your code. That's one of many okay. reasons. Also, because you can have comments like, getting crushed by a tank is pretty final. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Damage is always enough to smush the raspberry jelly out of a zombie. <laughs> so uh, so this is, our, this is our actual uh, crush code. Okay, and this is all still within tick. Right? Yes. Okay. So, um, so w once we, we already had some of this move code here. Mm -hmm. This stuff was already here. But now what we do is we get the world, and uh, this will always be true. I mean, this should this should never fail. Something's wrong, like the world's being shut down and your tank is still ticking if you hit this. But since I'm going to grab a thing and it's a pointer and it could theoretically be null, I just always wrap it in an if block like yeah. that. It just it's kind of avoids mistakes. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take... Um, so currently there's nothing in the world to collide with. Uh, so I already know when the tank says to move, it just goes. There's right. nothing that, that stops the tank yet in right. this game. Okay. So it's pretty easy. So I just take where the tank... <laughs> <laughs> you right? Sorry to everybody who just heard that <laughs> over a microphone. <laughs> so I just take basically where the tank was and where it will be. And I can't seem to get this whole line on the screen here. So we'll just go through it. Okay. Um, so this, is, this is output. So okay. this, this, is just, this is just an array of hit results. It has nothing in it yet. Where the tank started, where the tank's going, and the tank's current rotation. Which it is why we're getting that tank body component that we added earlier. Okay. Yep. And that, that allows us that allows us uh, you know, we could we could resize this if we wanted to or whatever. Um, we have a special profile that marks as overlap, not as block, but as overlap the things that we want to crush. In this case a zombie pawn. Uh, would be the, the collision channel that we made. Okay. And the collision shape. So let's look at where the collision shape comes from also. Really simple. It's just a box. It's set to box size. What is the box size? The scaled box extent. The scaled yeah. box extent of the tank body. So I avoided hard coding pretty much anything in here just right. by having a couple of those variables. And now if a designer wants to make a different size tank box or whatever, they can just kind of do it. And also it helps to just, you can go preview when you open up your blueprint and mm -hmm. be like, okay, this actually overlaps the tank sprite and all of that. Oh yeah, you can also do um, the debug command, show collision. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that'll that'll actually draw your tank box in like purple or whatever. You can actually change the color, but I think it defaults to something like purple. Um, so you can see the actual box. So if your tank is, is behaving weirdly, you might see like, oh, my box is oriented weirdly or it's it's at like the corner of my tank instead of being centered over the graphics. So you can Anything actually see like it that. more visibly rather than like trying to hard code your um, yeah. sweep numbers. Yeah, yeah you can kind of use the built-in debug stuff. Uh, of course, there are also commands for drawing debug boxes that oh, are yeah. pretty easy to use, but you don't even have to. Yeah. Um, okay. So there you go. And then we just use our damage interface. So this is kind of a neat thing with damage interfaces. We may have shown this, how to do this before, but uh, we don't actually care. You know what? I don't think we even needed that zombie include file. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll remove that and see if it still compiles. Um, so... Originally, we would have cast this to the type A zombie to see if what we hit was a zombie. But since we have the damage interface, we don't care if it's a zombie or not. We care if it's a damageable thing. Right. And we might put on a takes crush damage thing. Like maybe there's a 
bird zombie. Oh, so just flying above, so it can't. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't you can't do that. Um, and the bird zombie might even its function could even sometimes return true and sometimes false. Like if it has landed, it's Ooh. temporarily true, and then when it flies again, it it just returns false. That's one of the nice things about having a function instead of a property. Right. Um, so yeah, so basically we, we get the hit result actor. If this is null, that's fine. The cast function will attempt to cast a null thing, which will come back as null, and then this whole if statement will fail. And so we won't try to so apply the crush damage. Yep, so okay. it's fine. The only case where I think hit result will have a null actor is if you've used BSP geometry and you hit that. Oh. Uh, otherwise, I think the only other thing you can hit would be actors. And if you somehow like hit a tree or a barrel or something that didn't take crush damage yet because we didn't implement the interface, then it also would skip it because the cast would fail. Yep, that's right. Okay. So we definitely know that we have something that takes damage. We have no idea what. All we know is that it responds to the damage interface. So we can ask how much health it has remaining. And if it is uh, still alive. So you can't crush things that are already dead. Um, that makes sense. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense, although although y you could just run it over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can't crush things that are already dead. Uh, so we then we receive damage in the amount of its total current health, and of course with the type uh, crushed. Right. Um, so that's that's what we set that up for. Um, there you go. Oh yeah, a, a little thing we cleaned up. We just renamed this. This used to be called input component, which shadowed the other variable. I think in 4.14, when you create a new thing, I, I believe I fixed this, where it'll now have a different name like that, and uh, and that'll happen for us. But this this was created before then, I so we were, getting, upgrade for 4 we were getting some warnings. And uh, did we change any of these things? No, we just changed the name. Nope, and um, I think the last, one of the last things there is the... Yes, this oh, used to be a comment that said, to do, die. Make, make, the, <laughs> make the tank die. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just uh, to do. <laughs> yeah, um, so now we've actually done it. Um, so, this is a, a pretty straightforward check. Yes. If the damage is more than we can handle, then uh, if we were alive before we take the damage, now we're officially dead, and then we call that, that function. And that's just so that if for some reason there were multiple things coming to damage you and like one was going to kill, you don't get like two death animations, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it locks you out of that logic after you've called it once. So you know that tank die is only going to be called once per life. Um, and of course, if you did survive, then you just take the damage. Um, okay, so tank die implementation here, this is because tank die was the blueprint native event. So in code, it gets this uh, tank die implementation. Yes. And then in blueprints, you'll get the tank die function, like node. Yes, so, okay. so by default, the second the zombie makes the last hit on you, just the level restarts. Okay. Um, that's fine. Probably use blueprints to override it, make it a little smoother than that. But this is the base functionality. And this would also be a good place if you had a system of extra lives that you could choose to load your game over screen or something like that if if you you know if you don't want to continue on or Right. Or like check for if you do have, you know, some last uh, health power up or something like that, auto use it so you can't Oh like yeah. Die all the way or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So any any kind of, or you could do that in blueprints. I mean, wherever you want to do it is fine. Um, this is just this is just one possibility. So uh, I think that's it for this file. Tank die. Yeah, that's yep. it for this one. Yes, we did actually did do the to do of making the tank die. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, okay, and we said we were going to do zombies. Yes. And we didn't yet do zombies. So let's. I need to not open it there. Oh, uh, wait, I need to open it there and also here. Zombies are up here, right? We have an enemies folder? Yes. yes. We do you have an enemies folder? Because so we didn't actually touch the zombie's brain, but we did touch the regular zombie. Right, because we didn't really need to update the behavior. We just needed to change how zombies handle their death. Yeah, there wasn't a lot to do in here. Um, we added a zombie die function. Nope. So this there was Blueprint Implementable versus Blueprint Native. Mm -hmm. Like, What made you kind of decide that one should have at least a basic native or code implementation and this um, one shouldn't? I don't know. I mean, I would have been fine with this just having uh, just destroy as the base implementation. Yeah. Like, that would have been fine. Um, I think, yeah, I think I just, I just did it this way. I, I don't think there was a really, you know, a really strong reason for it. It's just, uh, it was mostly that we were doing this for graphical reasons, right. and then I think, uh, yeah, we just we just ended up fading out and destroying it there. If I went back, I, if if we as soon as we put in something like 
scoring that we just assume that everything has. Oh, like, yeah, you kill a zombie and you get some number of points or, yeah. Yeah, we, we might do that. But even then, you'd want to receive the points first, uh, whereas I think I would think the default implementation for zombie die would be destroy, which right. is be just remove the actor. But maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want the actor to sit around and you don't want to just not call the parent class. Um, at first, having, like, a ton of zombies on the field seemed fine, but I thought, oh, it would be even cooler if we fade them out. Yeah. Uh, so at first we were just going to have the zombies stay here, but so basically just we didn't need a code implementation. Yeah, so. we just kind of didn't need it, and there was no really standard thing that we for sure wanted to do for everything. So for that reason, we just made it blueprint imp implementable. But if somebody did want to like go back and change it, they would just change that keyword and then go make a code implementation, right? Yeah, it would be it would be just like uh, tank die. Uh, where we have, and actually, let's just look at that. Where we have this function, and this is the, the parent function of the blueprint function, and it's the default function if you don't have a blueprint function. So it would, yeah. be, it would be just like that, but with zombie die. Um, so that's it, and then of course, uh, when you change your interface, you have to go to everything that uses it. So this was the other thing that used that interface. We had to upgrade that. Um, but receive damage, uh, you know, that, I mean, that had to be changed to reflect the, uh, the negative one is dead thing. Mm -hmm. So that you can see this looks exactly like the tanks function. Um, but we didn't actually do anything yet with damage type in that, like, they don't uh, have a different, you know, function call or health uh, change based on if they're taking missile damage or another zombie is punching them or a tank ran over them. Um, that's true. If you wanted them to take bonus damage in here, uh, it would be a little weird. You you would have to, you would have to. Um, yeah, th this is not really set up right to do that. You would have to change this damage type or do additional damage to them in the zombie die function. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd probably make a separate receive damage call for the additional amount of damage. But if you wanted them to have reduced damage, you'd have a problem because it would first check oh, this. Than health. Then you know, yeah. So I mean, actually, no. You, you might be. Well, I mean, not, no, not on zombie dive, but just on in this receive damage function, we're not really doing anything based on the type. We're yeah. just passing it down to zombie dive. Yeah, we're just passing it down. Zombie dive has to handle it all internally. As soon as you wanted to have different damage types, I would modify this code a little bit. To I, I would have basically a function that says, um, like, check armor or modify damage that's called first thing on mm -hmm. receive damage, and then that can go into your blueprint and do whatever, or can do things in code and then continue the rest of this function with the modified damage number. This right. game simply doesn't have a concept of armor or damage type like a standard game does. Damage type in this game is only cosmetic, so that's that's why there isn't a function right here that will say like... Modify damage, damage based on damage type. Yeah, yeah, for armor or type or whatever. Yeah, like that would be here. And then your new damage would be... Yeah. <laughs> It would be like that, and then you put your, your incoming damage, your damage type in here. Yeah. Uh, but we're not. Okay. Um, so that I think I think that might be the only the only real change to zombie.cpp as well. Why do you think oh. I want to open this up in a tiny illegible window? Oh, um, we have an movement profile. That's uh, we do. Um, now we haven't implemented collision quite yet. Um, so we can come back to the... Yeah, we can come back to oh. that. Uh, the only other thing is that this line wasn't here before. Oh, right. Now that the... Um, that was all we needed for tanks to take damage. <laughs> uh, but we didn't get to it. So, yeah, put that in. And they do the damage type of zombie slap because they're zombies. Yep, they, they, just, they just sort of slap on the hood and <laughs> hope that that's going to work eventually. <laughs> but you'll get so annoyed by the noise inside of the tank that you'll come out <laughs> yeah, and then they come out throw donuts and then, at you. Yeah, donuts just right in your face. <laughs> um, I'm starting to figure out how these zombies work. I, they're, they're, they're devious. <laughs> yeah. They really are. Well, because it's all echoey inside the tank. And you yeah, you just hear slapping. You don't know yeah. where they're coming from. No. Um, like, oh my gosh, guys, be quiet. <laughs> I'm trying to read in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually what you would do. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, all we've really added to the spawner, actually, it's kind of neat. So um, with the spawner, uh, what I wanted to do was prevent it from spawning when the tank or uh, another zombie was in the spawner area. Okay. Um, and this was kind of, I don't know, like if you 
it's kind of like Gauntlet, um, where the little spawners would fill up a room and then they would stop spawning things because it was really tile based and so there was no place to put it. So in this case, the spawner doesn't block space. The spawner is open space itself, so it doesn't spawn things around itself, it spawns things in itself. But if something else is in the pool, it now won't spawn. Well, um, it seems like it prevents weird visual artifacts, like the tank being there, and then a zombie pops up on top of it, and you're like, zombie, yeah. where'd you come from? <laughs> yeah, or, <laughs> or, zombie. or 10 zombies that are like, just sort of, Stuck on top in of a each knot. Other. Oh, cause so then you, yeah, when you're trying to fire at them, you're like, why isn't the zombie dying? Cause you're just killing like the weird exterior zombie. Yep, yep, yeah. which also means we need AOE missiles, but Ooh, that'll, yes. be, that'll be a thing we do. Um, Okay, so yeah, so that's why we have the spawn collision profile. And again, this is nice because we didn't have to use any extra channels or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We just we just made a profile. Um, it's pretty simple what we Which, do. Oh, I think if you go up a little bit, Whoops. it's got spawner block. There we go. Yeah, is. so I did default the names in here, but this is an exposed U property, so okay. you could change them. Um, it's nice to have it done here because then you can look at the default, and then when you make your property, you can just check against the thing that's already in your editor. Right. Um, it, like the only thing we don't really do here is reference assets by path name. Like that's the thing we really try to avoid doing. Because then if you move something, right, with the exception of engine assets, those I, those I will because they're not going to move. Um, yeah, but yeah, things like default properties. As long as you make it something, well, if it's something you override, you can still override it, um, mm -hmm. and you're just going to access that variable name rather than try to string compare or something like that. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, okay, so let's see. Here we go. Right. Um, so this is when the spawner ticks. This, yeah, so on tick, uh, so we do an overlap any. We're not doing an overlap multi, and uh, this thing, we'll just, we'll just return a bool if something was overlapped, and I don't care too much what it was. Right, so um, overlap multi will just keep going, right, as long as... Yeah, and it'll give me an array of all the things I overlapped. Right, whereas you just care if there's anything there. Mm -hmm. You don't care if there's one thing there or ten things there, as long as there's something there. Yeah, I don't, e I don't even care what it was. Okay. Um, so I just want to know if there's anything here. If there's nothing, so if not overlap any, if there's nothing, then, uh, then we go ahead and spawn. Right, and um, we've got that spawn logic and the putting everything in the same plane that we did in previous stream. Yep. Yep. So, th I mean, that's all. It's, it's a minor modification, but... I don't know, kind of feels a little smoother. Um, uh, we could also, by the way, if we made this thing damageable at some point, we could check to see if it's... I'll put a little, like, yeah, zombie donut house there, and if you run yep. over with the tank, no more zombies come No out. more zombies, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you could have its health, like, as its health goes down, it spawns slower, mm -hmm. and then when it's finally destroyed, you just turn its tick function off entirely. Um, you do something like that. Uh, let, me, let me check our notes that we haven't looked at the entire time. Uh, well, actually, we're pretty much doing everything in the right order anyway. Yes. Uh, okay, so let's look at our turret. We made, we made some minor changes to the turrets. Uh, oh, yes, we made the turrets capable of shooting multiple projectiles at once. Ooh, it was really easy. So <laughs> what do we have to do for that? Um, but So you may remember when you first made the image mm -hmm. that we put up on the thread, it has like the smuck, the, the smuck poof. <laughs> That's it was a new thing that you invented just for that, <laughs> yes. and uh, and it comes out of the muzzle of the tank barrel when it fires. And it's like poof, and th right. that's pretty cool. So, um, but we used that in the stream for when the missile hits and explodes because we only had the one thing, one explosion, right? So we just did that, and I don't even think we had alpha on it or anything. It no, was I think just it might have faded away a little bit, but it wasn't it wasn't a super complicated explosion, so it wasn't nearly as exciting as what we're about to show. No. So yeah, but I I always thought that was cool that it was it was, you know, puff and then the missile would presumably explode with a different animation. Uh, so to do that, I just I just thought, okay, so when the tank fires, how about if it fires just a little dummy actor that plays an animation and fades out? Mm -hmm. And that could be smuck poof. <laughs> So Can you tell me it's actually <laughs> named that now? I <laughs> wish I could <laughs> rename the file with just nobody <laughs> looking, but everybody can see my screen, so I can't I can't okay. sneak it. Um, uh, so let's see. Uh, oh, we didn't change anything in here. Wait, what am I even doing in this file? I need to be in the what was it the turret file that we're talking about? The yeah, turret. Yes. Here we are. Okay, so it was a really simple change. This used to not be an array. It was just a single one of these things, and then I added an S onto this comment. And an S onto the variable name, I see. And an S onto the variable name, yeah. so no one would be the wiser. <laughs> um, 
And that's pretty much it. Uh, when we go to fire, input, where are we going? Here we are. <laughs> we go to input. I don't use these very often. Mm -hmm. These little auto loops with the with the colon. I usually use like an int i is one to whatever the or zero to right, right. yeah zero up to num array dot num. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it was like oh this is a good. I don't care about the order. I'm not going to remove things from this array during the process. So yeah, let's do it. Um, and this should probably be like a const ref or something like that. I don't know. That, that's what it usually is. I don't know if that works with T subclass of. Uh, whatever. Just if, if you're doing this often and with bigger lists, check that for efficiency. More than the two that we've got probably. Yeah, we have two. <laughs> so I, I just don't care. But um, but for a larger thing, it, it is usually a good idea to have like four const whatever your struct type is. Yeah. There we go. Struct type ref, uh, you know member of group like that like you usually you would do it like that mm -hmm. uh just const ref it's kind of just a better way to do things it also makes sure that since it's const that you don't accidentally do something like modify it you're not modifying your projectiles right you're just when you don't mean to um okay so actually, hmm? would that work here because we're actually modifying the project oh no we're spawning a projectile for yeah it. we're just yeah. spawning something based off it so okay. it's, it's fine um yeah, okay, and that's it. I mean, that's that's the modification now Now our target. And this will be really cool later if you do something like, you know, like triple shot, mm -hmm. right? Cause yeah. Yes. Um, you would probably also want to call on the new projectile some sort of, well, you have begin play. Mm -hmm. I guess you could just do it in begin play, but um, for your right and left projectiles, they would need to know I'm the right, I'm the left. So you probably have just three separate blueprints with, like, initial angle set to 45 or minus 45, oh, right. so your side ones know to do that. Because they're all the same location and rotation, so you, you would have to handle that in your... I would handle that in your blueprints for your missiles. Right, or you could just like take that little piece of code and wrap it in a function that then you can override in your blueprint. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, now, what do we do in our missile? Let's check our diffs. Uh, missile's at the very bottom there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Uh, missile.h. Uh, okay, that's a comment change. But missile.cpp, there we are. That's the real change. Okay, so, uh, okay, we're in the CPP. Good. So we have the missile radius here. Um, we I've set it up so that you can set the missile radius to zero if you want. Um, and the idea behind doing that would be if you have like a like a mortar or grenade launcher that goes over stuff, you can not do any of this collision code. Oh, okay. And then your thing could just have like a timer on it in the blueprint that knows like, you know, 1.5 seconds after I've been launched, explode. Right. Um, so that way you could you could do other types like that. Things that don't necessarily trace to the world, but you still want to have shoot out of the turret. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so... Zombie nets. Smuck poofs. <laughs> um... If those were done as missiles, actually, I think that's just done as an actor. But but if you wanted it to to travel like a missile mm -hmm. and just just glom onto your missile code, you could do that. Um, all right, so let's see. Here, yeah, so we're we're treating all of these missiles as circles because it's a two D game, so capsules. So it's a tall circle, mm -hmm. um, not a sphere, because things at different heights. Right, that, that sphere is a different width. Oh, that's the other thing. Relative to those heights, so we want it to be constant width. For the you know everything but the caps, which should be so far off the, I mean yeah, it's it two hundred. Right. That's a half height, so it's four hundred units high. Yeah. That's that's way out of range. Um, again, we only care about the first thing that we hit that is a blocking hit. Overlaps don't care. This is just this is just for this. And there could be a point where, where like this isn't how we want the missile to work. Like maybe we want a missile that that affects everything it overlaps. Mm -hmm. um, Possibly like uh, I, I liked in in Warcraft three there was this ability called chain lightning which was pretty cool. Oh, so like would hit something and then jump to the next. And yeah, then, yeah. find the other things. So like that could be a cool way to do it. Or just general piercing ability, right? Like that's something that you want to turn on and off for different weapon types. Yeah, definitely. Like like, like a, like a railgun. <gasps> yeah. I need a laser beam on my tanks now. That's, that's gonna be right. Stream something something in the future. Laser <laughs> beams, railguns, all that stuff. Yes. Um, oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I was just thinking, we should have the laser beam, like the Japanese laser beam that hits the ground, and makes the line, and then like a couple seconds later, it's like, you know, Ooh, like oh, we got to do it. We got to do it.
Okay. So many possible These are things types. for later. These yeah. are things for later. <laughs> <laughs> this might be post GDC. I don't know. <laughs> um, all right. So so once we've hit it, uh, we just basically go through and we inflict missile damage. You can see this is like some of the stuff is fairly hard coded. So this, for example, um, this should probably be either a function or a property. Probably okay. a property is sufficient. Um, so that a different missile type could say like, well, you know, this missile oh. is a cannonball, so it just right. crushes things. Like it's just a, this is a boulder. I have a tank that has arms on the top and it rolls a boulder. It's like a big bowling ball tank. Um, but right, like then right, you, you want to be able to read like just have that rather than being hard coded as hit with missile as missile damage type is mm -hmm. available. Yeah. And of course, we have direct damage, which implies that we're going to have AOE damage mm -hmm. since it's a missile. Um, we don't have that yet, but it's it's implied. Um, and if you really went further along with this, we, we probably aren't going to do this here, but if you really went further along, you would actually have received damage. Instead of taking a damage amount and a damage type, you would have it take a struct that would that you could evolve Ooh. over time that would include, right, like type, um, amount. Uh, Effect radius inst or things like that. Instigator, yeah. right, right, right. Radius fall off. You know, and of course, if it has radius and fall off, then it has to have center. Mm -hmm. um, There's all sorts of things you do, like you could even put the sound effect on that so that it gets carried, like as a property, so then you can set that in the blueprint of the missile and carry that around. And Yeah, when you start making more, more like larger, more complex games, mm -hmm. uh, you start doing things with these abstract data types um, that you pass around, but for now, this it just doesn't need that, right. and and it, there's also a certain element of um, programming skill that is picking the appropriate, you know, right. Right, like right now we just need damage, so we're not going to make a struct that just has a damage property or a damage property and a damage type, right? Right. Yeah. You, you don't want a tool that is too big for the job. You don't want a tool that's too little for the job either. So we don't overkill things right away. Um, Except that's we are chasing a bunch of zombies with tanks, so I feel like. <laughs> Well, I mean, you want to be sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All that a little too big is better than a little too small. Um, and I think, is that, yeah, that's most of what we have to do there. Okay, so that covers our, our code pretty much. Uh, there's, there's also some content stuff to do. Yes. All right, so first thing before we forget about it is uh, our, let's dock this up here, is our collision stuff. So it's pretty simple, but basically what we did was we came down to the bottom here and and uh so we made these three channels zombies missiles tanks right which we made i think in the sh last stream or the stream before that yeah i think these i think these were not are not new today these right. have been there but down here uh some of these like tank crush and spawner block those are definitely new mm -hmm. uh zombie move i started to implement zombie movement but it's mm, we're, we're not using it yet uh so that one's still in here but it isn't actually used tank move what do we do with tank move? Tank move just checks to see if it overlaps zombie pawn, which we don't really need because we have tank crush, which is exactly the same thing. Uh, tank move, again, if we get the tank colliding with things later, then we'll use that for, you know. Separately from crushing, right? Yeah, for, for what it actually bumps into. Um, so tank move and zombie move are kind of there, but they're not really needed. Missile fly, we definitely actually use. Right. Um, and right. spawner block we use. Tank crush is that, and then spawner block is uh it's it's actually not block but it's that the spawner is inhibited from spawning right uh it overlaps just tanks and zombies it will still spawn if there's a missile whooshing through that makes sense because you don't really time. want a missile flying over to stop a zombie from spawning yeah i'd rather have the zombie be like Rah! and pop up right in front of the <laughs> missile <laughs> it's way funnier or pop up <laughs> right after <laughs> the missile's gone by like phew <laughs> 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 I hope that was the last missile. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the missile, the next one just comes in just like, oh. <laughs> it wasn't the last missile. <laughs> no. Um, I don't think our tanks have any sort of ammo limit. They just they fire don't. forever. It's just full of missiles. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we got some new Kenny sprites. Yes, which um, thank you very much, Kenny, for giving us awesome squished zombie sprites. Like, they <laughs> seriously make me way, way happy. So we got explosions. Um... And and so a thing that we did here, so we we imported the sprite, we took all the the frames and um, and you know just just imported that in. But then also, oh you know what? I like to have this open. I like this better. Um, back up a level. So also we made a material out of it. 
Um, so this is a material instance, and what we did... I think if you click on the little, like either cube or something on the bottom, it might show, although that's kind of cool that it's all... Yeah, it's all stretched scary. Out like that. <laughs> yeah, this this yeah, I mean I don't I don't usually for sprite sheets like this is not a great visualizer. <laughs> There's no great visualizer for sprite sheets. You just it's just a it's just a sprite sheet. There's mm -hmm. nothing really to uh, but for any other material, anything that responded to lighting or was used in oh, 3D, yeah. this this would actually make sense. Um, so uh, we just we just made a basic translucent material. Mm -hmm. I think the default translucent material that we were using um, didn't ship in 414. I'm not sure if it was supposed to or not, but it's it's an extremely simple material to make. So we just made one. We take the texture coordinate, we take the input vertex color, and we multiply the vertex color by the thing, and then there you go. You have your regular color and your alpha level. Right. It's very so your smoke puffs can be transparent in parts. And then this just just basically takes that parent material and says, this is what we're talking about when we say the, the input texture. texture. Right. Yeah, pretty simple. Uh, but it lets us use our our alpha, which we which we really really want for mm -hmm. these explosions. Um, they look they look great with the they'll have like some solid black in them. But if you put the alpha in, it's just like a little a little darkening of the area, and it looks looks really cool. Um, so that's why we need that alpha. Uh, let's see. And then I think we've got what tank die and, and zombie. zombie. Die? You got the zombie that is unmistakably all done. Yes. Um, Jay's just dropped the donut box all over the place, <laughs> and he's not a happy zombie. <laughs> he'll, he'll be happy when he gets back up. He's not a zombie anymore, though. <laughs> that is very true. Um, okay, so so we put the explosions and the new zombies in. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, yeah, and we made a material for the zombie as well. Uh, and, again, all these things are going to be available for everybody to go download afterwards. And Oh, yes, yes. They'll all be included here. Fiddle around with and make their own um, zombie faceplant games. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so just, he's like... <laughs> that's a genre. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's look at the zombie. So we actually we changed the zombies and the... Um, what do we change? The zombies? Yeah, the zombie that, that's blueprint? the main thing. I think we did some in the tank, but... Uh, oh, yeah. I, well, I'll do the tank really quickly because okay. it's it's short. So when the tank... When the tank dies, um, we just do this. Uh, oh, but we have to... No, what we would like to do... Okay. Sorry, what? Oh, so if we didn't have this event tank die, it would just call... It would just do this anyway, so okay. this isn't actually doing anything right now. Okay. But let's say that we want to... If we had like a like a like like an exploding tank animation, mm -hmm. which we just didn't have time to get to this time, but if we did, uh, let's say that runs for like... Or maybe flash a message on the screen of like... The zombies won. Yes. Whatever. Your head explode. So, take that one back to 2008. Um, so, yeah, we, just, we could just put a delay here. We could run an animation, uh, particle effects, sound effects, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then we go back to the parent, which will actually restart the level. Okay. Um, which doesn't happen instantly. And you go, what happened? Mm -hmm. That way, like, with a little bit of a delay, delay, too, it helps that you don't your player knows that something just happened rather than... Maybe the game bugged out or something like that. Yeah, rather than it just instantly just boom, restarts the level. Right. It's sort of sort of jarring. Um, I think about two seconds is the ideal. Mm -hmm. um, we we did a lot of how long should you watch your character die when when we released uh, uh, one of the Ghost Recon games, and um, two seconds seemed to be exactly the right amount to get you to calm down, realize that you had died, and then be in the right frame of mind to see the replay of of why you died and stop mashing buttons. <laughs> like there, there's there was a set of things that we wanted to have happen so you could understand what just happened. And uh, two seconds was about what we found. So, you know, that's that's some research you don't have to do now. <laughs> um, it's, it's a good, good starting it's point. At least, yeah, it's at the very least a good starting point, a tested starting point. Um, okay, so, oh yeah, uh, I didn't mention this in Tank Statics, but check this out, we have a button that does it. I found with a lot of these flipbooks that I had... I think it just opened over there, so it's directed. Did it open over? Uh, whoops. Visual Studios. It still should still be... Yeah, okay, so here it is. So I found a lot of times that I was having like four node long strings mm -hmm. when I wanted to play a, a flipbook, and I just got tired of doing that. And you'll find like if you... There we go. If you work with designers, um, they might not tell you this, but if you work closely with them, you'll notice that they keep doing this. Or if you look at their blueprints, mm -hmm. you'll just keep seeing they have 
they make their own macros or their own blueprint functions or they just have these long strings of nodes that you see everywhere. Right. So sometimes just do this. Right, so again, like you're prototyping something like, oh, I just keep using this behavior over and over. This is a nice reusable mm -hmm. piece of code. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really decluttered the blueprint. And that's good because I've added a bunch of logic to these blueprints. So it was nice to have something to clear it up a little bit. Um, so pretty straightforward. Uh, when the zombie walks, we still, we still just vary the zombie's speed between regular animation speed and double mm -hmm. based on whether it's going its walk or its run speed. We assume that these zombies are never standing still. Um, yeah, they're fueled by their sugar rush <laughs> from donuts. <laughs> they, they always just wander, even if they don't see you. Um, and actually, when they turn, they go a little slower. Like, if you drive past them and they, they have to turn around to get to you, they, they move slower until they start facing back toward you. So that, that scales pretty often. Um, all right. So zombie die. That's our new... Yeah, this is our new big one, okay. right? Um, and just so people know how you pulled up this node, because sometimes, you know, it's like, oh, I inherited from this uh, class. How do I get it? So you just... Right there. Just right there. Yep, it just shows up with all the others. And I think also if you click on like the eye under my blueprint, or wait, is it overridable? Uh, oh, um, I think uh, where it says 22 overridable. I think it's like doo -doo -doo. oh override. That's what it's magic and tiny mouse over it. If you had something um, like should attack or oh, it yeah. was a blueprint native event, then you'd have some things there that you could click on. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if this one will show up because we already have it. Right. But yeah, those other ones were blueprint native events that we made. Um, okay, so yeah, that, that, that's a good way to find those too. Um, all right, so, you know, we... It's just know because it's like a stealth button. You have to mouse over and it's like, oh, you want to override something? Here, you got some buttons. Yeah, it's a pretty convenient little list. Um, all right, so... Uh, we're going to turn off its collision, right, so, mm -hmm. you, so that missiles will not continue to hit a zombie who's already died and he sort of acts as a wall. Right. Um, we don't want that. Um, and I guess the zombie's a little bit more prone in that sprite when he's dead. Oh, no, this is an in interesting little thing here. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually took his collision, or took his, uh, his, his actor location and moved him down by 10 units. And the reason I did this was because otherwise there's Z-fighting. A dead zombie appears to be like at head height for the other oh, zombies. Right. So I just moved him down a little bit so that he would render, so any time a live zombie walks over a dead zombie, the dead zombie is always rendered at the bottom. That makes sense. And yeah, because yeah, he's kind of like falling over and so. Yeah, it, it, ne it needs to kind of, it kind of look weird the other way. So simple fix. Um, so there we go, we set his location. Uh, we play his death animation, which is just the one frame. Mm -hmm. And then here's where it starts to get kind of fun. Um, all right, so we start this one timeline here, and this uh, just alphas him out. Why does that say a thousand? Does that say a thousand? It does say a thousand. That's really, really blue. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was supposed to be 1.000. Maybe I mistyped that. I don't know. Um, but the important thing is that we go into this timeline. And it's slowly decreasing. Yeah, from a second to a, ha a second and a half out to five seconds, he just fades out. Okay. So that's a pretty nice way, you know, because I don't, I never really like that much when a character just vanishes in video games. At least they should explode or blink or fade out or something. Right. I something picked fade good. out for this one. Um, let's get back to our graph. All right, so we do that, and then once we're done fading out, uh, we destroy actor. We're just done. Uh, we never actually call... Oh, does it also shrink? I think it looks like... Oh, no, he doesn't shrink. He doesn't Hold shrink? Okay. No. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting ahead. Okay. Ah. Um, we don't call the parent version of this because there is no parent version because it was a blueprint implementable instead of a native, right. which we discussed when we were in the code. Um, so that does mean that if we want him to be destroyed, it's our responsibility to do it here. The other thing... Now, these two timelines run simultaneously because when you start a timeline, it doesn't... It doesn't like hold you in here. Right, the blueprint can keep going. Block. Yeah, yeah it doesn't block. Um, so, if you were crushed specifically, then on this other timeline, from one to one and a half, over. For, I'm sorry, from one to one and a quarter over one and a half seconds. That is. Whoops! I know you don't change blueprints. You change what window you're in. There we go. Um, that is your new world scale. So your world scale will slowly increase, and we'll see what this looks like. If you uh, can figure it out, it's pretty cool. If you, if you haven't figured it out, just wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, yeah. Um, and actually, I don't think there's much more to, um, uh, I don't think there's much more to talk about there. I think we can show it. Yeah. 
and then get so, to the questions. Let's see. Oh, Lauren, would you like to? Uh, oh, I think I'll just make the sound effect. So okay. All right. All right. Lauren's on sounds. Uh, here we go. All Wait. right. <laughs> All right, maybe the sound effects of the tank are just going to be giggle giggling if I do it. So. So then, <laughs> that's fine. It's, so there are new explosions. There's the smoke that, that Lauren drew in that original thing. It was finally real. Here are the zombies. Too many zombies. <laughs> <laughs> and you see them all sort of spread out a little bit. Yeah. So, um, so when they die via a missile or via anything that doesn't crush, they just sort of splat and they just face plant and that's it. Yeah. But when you crush them, Oh, they spread oh, out a little bit. Oh, they get big. <laughs> <laughs> and if you run over the zombies that are already dead from a missile attack, they don't oh, get big. Oh, that one killed me. Now you see I can't <gasps> oh, I can't no. move. For three seconds there was that delay. The tank turret AI had not been turned off, so the tank turret was still able to turn. Okay. But uh, I don't think it would have fired because I think that's handled by the tank. I'm not sure. I might have still been able to fire, but I couldn't move. Yeah, the fire input is still handled by the tank, I believe. That's you know, I don't even mind that actually. Like the tank can still fire, but its its treads have been destroyed oh, and it's about yeah. to blow up. Because so they've I'm been slapped so much by zombies. <laughs> by zombies, I'm fine with that. Now, if I just if I just park right here, now the spawner is obstructed. Oh, whoop! I got killed. There was someone in there. <laughs> there's, some, there's a zombie hiding, a stealth so zombie. Let's see. So if I sit right here, the the spawner should not. Yeah, it does not spawn any additional zombies. Because if it was blocked by the other zombie, yeah. right? Because it's blocked. Oh, I don't have the range. Okay, so anyway, <gasps> squishing zombies. There we go, squishing zombies. Yes, I really hope that people like take this project from the forums and add all sorts of things like laser beams and sound effects and that would be pretty maybe cool. Maybe a health bar for your tank so you know when the zombies are about to punch you to death. That'd mm -hmm. be pretty good too. Oh, by the way, there was one. There was one minor bug that I had noticed that I uh, I wanted to to address just briefly. It's a really minor one. This play flipbook should have one more bool in it that mm -hmm. says play from start. Okay. Uh, because there are two functions. There's play and there's play from start. Uh, for animations where you want to reset the animation if you're already in it, like the attack animation, you mm. want play from start. Okay. So, so that's, that's a minor thing. I might fix that up before I send it out. I don't know. Okay. It's fine. Um, what was the next thing we were going to do? Oh, yeah. We, we have questions. We have questions. So right, Valkyrie was oh, 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 asking, what's a good way to find places to help out with the source? I'm assuming like the API, um, like documentation. So we've got two sets of programming documentation. We've got the API reference, which is gener generated from the code. Um, and there are some code examples in there because we've added the framework to put in code examples. But it's not as extensive as um, some of our um, written uh, programming uh, documentation. So mm -hmm. the tutorials like the FPS tutorial, some of the UMG tutorials. There's reference material over things like um, T-shirt pointer and arrays and sets, like a lot of the different Unreal specific types. And so I think using those in conjunction and then things like um, you know, the streams or the videos or tutorials like that should be a, a good, those are the most of the resources that we've got for jumping off with C++ code. Um, is there anything as far as no? To I add mean, to that? I mean, I think yeah. Those those are kind of our resources. Um, I, I I mean, so I'm assuming that's what help out with the source means. Mm -hmm. um, if yeah, if if you mean like programming resources, that would be we have. I think we have a couple groups on our forum that are like looking for people to work on paid or unpaid projects, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, and you could, you know, you could work with other programmers there, or if you're in any sort of like a like a college program or anything like that, find other people who are interested there. And you know, actually, yeah, that reminds me of like the community is great resources, right? Like the the Unreal Slackers, which is now on Discord, um, and uh, things like the forums and mm -hmm. people reaching out and helping with things like that. I think um, may help when you get in sort of a rough spot where you know the comment doesn't quite. Uh, clear things up enough for you or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then Victor Burgos is asking if we will redo this in more of a complete tutorial series at some point um, because of the engine version changing and, and code between streams. Um, he also specified in the very near future. <laughs> so GDC is in the very near future, which means no. <laughs> um, sorry, I mean, but the the honest answer is that certainly not in the very near future. Um, as of as for doing it with just one engine version, um, I don't know. Uh, a lot of these things 
didn't really change that much. There were right. most of it was was like uh, here's a convenience function that we wrote. Oh, now it's part of the engine. We don't need it here anymore. Or like here's a minor engine bug that we happen to run into and work around. Oh, now it's fixed, so we don't have to work around it anymore. It was mostly stuff like that. Um, I think if you started from the beginning with this in the current engine version, mm -hmm. it would just work, and you could just sort of ignore that we that we say we're in 4.10 when you're on 4.14. Like, you could just do it. Um, yeah, this one, this one got extended. We don't usually change engine versions, but this one has been extended. There were some, there were some reasons why we had pauses in it, mm -hmm. and... Um, so this one's unusual in that regard. This is not a normal thing for these things. I think this is the only one we've done like this. Yeah, but I mean, I think we've got a lot of, you know, sample code out there, both like this and Shooter Game and Unreal Match 3 that people can like dissect in those, you know, like uh, Unreal Match 3, we update across engine versions if mm -hmm. there's anything that needs to update, you know, based on API changes. So I think that that's kind of an important example to show of like if you're upgrading your project, there are some of the things you might have to change. So yeah, I think I think that would be a good one to do. But yeah, we, we probably wouldn't uh, we probably wouldn't want to spend the stream time on redoing this one uh, when we could do a new one. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's just and yeah, as you said, the very near future is less likely than it maybe at some point doing another maybe more of a video series rather than a, a stream. But uh, yeah, yeah. But not on this content, right? And just another programming set, kind of like. Battery tutorial plus plus. Yeah, yeah, it would probably be on 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 something new, just 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 for the the sake of the variety. I mean, we can teach the programming techniques in in a bunch of different contexts. So, um, you know, th there are more areas to touch on than we could possibly ever get to. So yeah, like I know you want to show like um, making replays and things like that, right? Oh yeah, 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 that's that's a cool one. We could do that in in any project, and maybe we'll do it in this one. I don't know. Um, but yeah, really good tank versus zombie battles. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're you're especially good ones up on the internet. Yes. Yeah. All right, so I think those are the only questions. Yeah, those are the only ones I see here. Um, but the project will be uploaded to the forums mm -hmm. in the asset sharing forum. We'll put the link there. Um, this video will be uploaded to YouTube also, so people who maybe came in the middle or want to check back later, it'll be there in a couple days. And then uh, I believe next week is going to be Ian and Alex with more. AI fun times, oh. but uh, that's probably the plan right now. So thanks everybody for watching and have fun. <laughs>